What's up guys, Mike the Repair Guy here. Today we're gonna to fix an inlet valve on a Frigidaire washer. Check it out. Alright guys, today I had this problem with uh, this refrigerator washer that I picked up. Uh, maybe you guys ran into this problem. So I turned the water on, and oh my gosh, we got just water coming out everywhere. Look at all that water coming from the bottom. What can it be? Well, let's check it out, guys. First thing we need to do is we need to take the top off um, this top case here. So there's going to be two screws in the back. There's one here. There's two screws in the back. There's one here. And there's one here. Um, they're just Phillips screws. I've already went ahead and um, undid them, but uh, we'll go ahead and take it out. Take a look at what's going on here. This just slides back, and we just take it off. Let's take a look inside the washer and see what's going on. All right, so so we can see. I don't know if you guys can see in the camera well. There's all kinds of water in here. Um, I'm going to guess that there's probably a leak somewhere within the inlet valve here since as you've seen once I applied the water without the washer even being on we're getting water leaking out everywhere so these solenoids right here actually control the inlet valve this is your hot and your cold water come in the back right through here um, once they come in these solenoids are what actually stop the water from spraying into the into the washer so um, so we have everything hooked up with the top off. Let's turn the water on and figure out where our leak is coming from. So you can see the water spraying from that valve. So where it looks like it's actually coming from is the bottom of this inlet valve, which I believe is the cold valve here, um, which my guess is is probably cracked. These things are actually very fragile. Um, if you, you know, kind of bump and slam the washer around, these things break really easy. Um, so my guess is that this is probably cracked. That's why all the water is spraying out of there. That's what it looks like. I can't really feel the crack right here, but we'll go ahead and change it out. And I'm sure that'll fix the problem. And once we take it out, we'll probably be able to see, um, you know, where the crack is on, on the inlet valve. So as always, um, you know, we'll list the parts in, in the bottom, guys, down in the description. And I'll show you the exact part that we're getting. So we're going to be replacing this inlet valve today. It should be a pretty easy job. It's not really that hard, guys. There's two screws. Um, there's one right here that holds it. And then there's one, you probably can't see at this angle, but it's it's basically right underneath there. We'll um, have to maneuver the, the washer. Um, so then we'll just swap them out. We just disconnect these solenoids, and then um, you know, it should be pretty easy to swap them out. So let me move the camera down, and we will get to work on it. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the hoses from the back of the washer. So go ahead and take these off. So once we got that off back here, um, now what we need to do is we need to take this cover off. So it has these little clips in here. I'll get you guys a shot of that and we'll take that off. You just need a flathead screwdriver. Okay guys, try to get you guys a close-up of this. Um, there's clips right here. I don't know if you're able to see on the video, but uh, there's a little clip right here that actually is holding it into the, the metal here. So what you need to do is kind of pop this clip out, press the clip in, and see it'll start coming out. And you just work all these little clips all the way around. Like such.
and that whole piece just comes right out. And you're going to be able to see you now the inlet valve is free floating right here. Okay, now all we need to do is go ahead and disconnect the wires and then undo the two screws. Okay, so before you disconnect these wires, before you disconnect these wires, make sure that you unplug the washer so you don't have any power coming through. Okay, then there's a little clip right there. What you need to do is just lift it up to get over that little clip, and then you, these just come right off. Just like such. See, that's a little, little clip you gotta lift up and over. Sorry guys, it's a little cold today, so stuff's a little harder on here. But sometimes it could be a little difficult to get off. Be careful guys not to damage, try not to damage these uh, connectors, okay? Right now what we need to do is get this screw out. Okay, the other screw that's on the bottom right there, I personally found the easiest way to do it is to go ahead and untwist your breather valve so it gives you room and you'll see it says lock, unlock on here. You just turn it to the unlock and this actually pulls out. Make sure you don't lose your rubber seal there. And we can kind of move this to the side so it makes it a little bit easier for us to get down in here to get the screw. All right guys, so we're gonna take the screws off. I apologize, I had to take this bottom one off up without the camera because I can't really show you. I can't get this angle. You gotta really get the screwdriver down there underneath, underneath there. Okay, then we're gonna take, go ahead and take this other screw off here. Okay, it's just these two small Phillips head screws, okay? okay? Once you get that undone, we have our wires disconnected. There's one more wire connected to the valve. It's a little easier to take it off once we pull it out. You're just gonna apply some pressure and you just gotta pull it away and it'll come right out, okay? And you go ahead and maneuver it through, pull it up. Okay, this wire actually came off underneath here but this is where this little wire connects right here it actually already came off but so now we look at it oh yeah that's completely cracked so you look at the valve look at this side it's pulled apart you see that that is completely cracked that's where our water was coming from guys so we have a new valve no crack I'm just gonna slide this right back in here You gotta really be careful that you don't damage those um, leads that come in there. So you're just gonna slide it right back into where it was at. And then get our screws back in here. screw in here. This one's going to be a little bit of a daunting task. I'm sure we're going to lose the screw. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to get in the way of the camera here so I can get the angle where this needs to go.
uh, screwed in nice and tight. Just a nice tight hand tighten. Just double check the other one here. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect all the wires back up. Make sure to connect that yellow and gray wiring harness. Red to red, green to green, blue to blue. Okay, make sure you reconnect the breather valve. Twist to lock it back secure. Okay guys, we're about 90% done. This just clips back on. Secure those. Alright, let's go ahead and hook it up and give it a shot. Alright guys, I connected the hoses. Just turn the water back on. No leak. So, it looks like that has probably fixed the issue. No water leaking down here, which is great. We can turn on the washer. It is normal. Make sure it fills up with water. We'll wash to make sure that as it's calling for water, nothing's leaking. Calling for water now. No leaking. Guys, it looks like we just fixed the washer. Very, very simple. Five minute fix, guys. Five minute fix. All right, guys. So that's it. Um, if you can, go ahead and give us a subscribe. We're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. Like the video. If you can, give us a like, compliments, comments, anything we could do better. Um, we just went ahead and replaced this whole inlet valve assembly on this Frigidaire washer. So if, I mean, we did it in less than probably 10 minutes. If you guys have this issue at home with your washer, this is a quick, easy fix. Um, very inexpensive. I, have, I, I flip appliances, so I have a lot of parts and I'm able to buy parts. So these parts are pretty cheap for me. Um, but I'll list the parts that we used um, down in, in the link below. I mean, you can get them on Amazon for probably, I don't know, 20 bucks, maybe 15 bucks, something like that. Um, so, until next time guys, Mike the Repair Guy, be kind.